the system of 1983. Presentation. This is Jim from the State Cartographer's Office at UW-Madison. I'm joined today by my colleague Jamie, who is the Map and Geospatial Data Librarian with the Robinson Map Library, also at UW-Madison. Our purpose today is really to update you on some of our recent activities related to the geodata at Wisconsin Geoportal, and as the title says, uh, tell you a little bit more about how you can get involved moving forward. I'm happy to say, you know, we've made some major steps forward over the last couple of years, both in terms of our overall experience when you visit the site, but also formalizing our methods, policies, and supporting infrastructure that you don't necessarily see happening behind the scenes. We've presented on this topic a number of times at past WLA events, so I hope this isn't the first time you've heard of Geodata at Wisconsin, but if it is, uh, that's okay, no worries. We also hope this presentation will serve as an intro for anyone who's unfamiliar. Starting with the basics, at its core, Geodata at Wisconsin, or sometimes we might just refer to it as Geodata, is an online geoportal for the discovery and download of Wisconsin geospatial data. It's worth noting this is a product of an ongoing collaboration between the Robinson Map Library, or RML for short, and the State Cartographer's Office, or you'll hear me say SCO or SCO for short, where Jamie and I are the main program leaders behind this effort. And you know, naturally you might wonder right away, well, why are you guys doing this in the first place? What led you to this activity? And it's really an outgrowth of our respective missions, where RML has a mission to collect and preserve uh, geospatial information for the state of Wisconsin. And similarly, the SCO has a statutory mission that actually dates back to the 1970s that refers to maintaining a catalog of cartographic resources, where if we translate that into the modern era, we, we can talk about uh, cataloging geospatial data resources. Something we want to emphasize is that geodata is not a project. There's a permanent commitment to this work at the UW, and it's an integral part of our respective public service missions. Before I continue, I think it's also important to talk about our primary intended audience for the GeoPortal, which very simply is data consumers, or more specifically, anyone looking for geospatial data in order to solve problems. That could be private consultants, it could be businesses, government employees seeking data that's not already held in internal business repositories for that agency, students, nonprofits, and the list goes on. Before going much further, it's important to understand that Geodata at Wisconsin is more than a user interface for finding data. Really, we view it as a system that's comprised of many different pieces that you see illustrated here. And importantly, it really all begins with data producers, which includes many of you uh, watching this presentation today. With some exceptions, SEO and RML, we aren't data creators per se, but rather it's our job to connect people with the stuff that you all out there are creating. So that's something we recognize is very important. And I'm not gonna take the time to talk about all these different pieces and parts today, but one concept I wanna highlight is this notion of customer service. We'll have a few more words to say about this later on, but for now, I'll suffice it to say that this is something that, you know, when talking about statewide geoportals is often overlooked and frankly underestimated the amount of effort and the importance of this when folks do stand up these geoportals. So if we look at individual pieces of the system that makes up geodata at Wisconsin, the user interface is probably the most one of the most important pieces. This is the GeoPortal, the web interface that users interact with to discover and get access to the content within the GeoPortal itself. So whether that's a geospatial data set, aerial imagery, scanned maps, those sorts of things, the GeoPortal allows that search and discovery for the resources. Not gonna talk a lot about the user interface itself. It's pretty self-explanatory, um, but we'll highlight a few things um, about it. Currently, almost 21,000 downloadable data sets, scan maps, and aerial imagery exist within Geodata. Again, there are search and browse capabilities that allow users to discover the content and access it. And all of the content is directly downloadable or accessible. So if it's not an actual data file that you're able to download, it's a web service or some kind of content that you're able to interact with. 
To search for data, there are two primary methods. The first is keyword search. This is, again, pretty self-explanatory keyword search box uh, right in the, the front page of the GeoPortal where you enter search terms. There's an advanced search option as well. And the other search option is, of course, the map search or the spatial search, which allows you to browse for content or search for content in the GeoPortal um, by geographic location. And browsing for data involves utilizing many or multiple filters within the GeoPortal. So we've done some work to create different collections of data that we think it makes sense for users to access data of similar themes together in one place. The Coastal Layers collection is a great example of that. Uh, the Aerial Imagery collection, we actually have a collection of, of just state agency data layers, for example. But all of these filter options here allow you to quickly jump into different categories of information that exist within the GeoPortal to browse the information that's there. Adding data to Geodata at Wisconsin happens several different ways. Uh, one example is the Wisconsin Land Information Program call for data from counties, which happens every spring. This is a pretty major feeder of content for the GeoPortal uh, and the archive at the Robinson Map Library. We typically add between four and 500 data layers to the GeoPortal through that that WLIP call process. And thinking back to that system diagram, um, we've included the data archive, um, which basically is our goal for uh, the long-term preservation aspect of collecting geospatial data in Wisconsin and making sure it's accessible through time. We also have scanned map collections from UW Digital Collections. Uh, those are primarily the public land survey original plat maps. And of course, all vintages and scales of USGS topographic maps are also available. We also have the ability to add metadata records from uh, partner open data sites. So partner agencies that have open data sites where they're sharing data to users online, we're able to harvest those metadata records and create broader discovery for that content through Geodata at Wisconsin. I just wanna point out that we do publish the collection development policy that we follow um, on the, the GeoPortal page itself. So you can take a look at that. Basically what a collection development policy is, is uh, an outline of what we collect, why we collect it, how often um, things are added, and um, just to kind of provide some structure for our own work every day, but then to also give our users a sense of what they might find um, within the GeoPortal. I'd like to build upon something that Jamie just mentioned. Uh, one of our goals is to serve as close to a quote unquote one-stop shop as we can for users seeking out Wisconsin geospatial data. And an important part towards that goal is taking steps to automatically synchronize with the 26 other geoportals in the state that are maintained by cities, counties, RPCs, and state agencies. And you know how we do this and what's happening behind the scenes, that's really not important for today. That's beyond the scope of what we need to talk about. But suffice to say that by syncing with these other sites, we're able to include nearly 1,500 data sets that are held by these other contributors. And in doing so, we are connecting folks directly to the most current authoritative data sources. Here's a random example of a synchronized layer, in this case coming from Waukesha County. All of the metadata information you see here is being pulled from the Waukesha County open data site. And among other things, you'll see a dynamic queryable map down at the bottom of the page. You'll see a link up above to open the same data layer in ArcGIS Online. And something that's important to point out is we also have links directly back to the Waukesha County open data site where a person can get more information. Also notice this download file button and something that's important to explain is the following. And that is in the case of these synchronized layers, what we do is when a person clicks on download file, it's actually pulling data from the county site, Waukesha County, in this particular case, it's not pulling the data from RML or SEO. We're not out there scraping data. We just basically send people to the county site in this, this particular example. 
Similarly, you'll also see links to web services where if a person clicks on that, they can get information about the web service here again, that's maintained by the county and not by us. And you know, this reminds me, I wanna say a couple of words about map services in general. Honestly, it doesn't come up very often, but occasionally we're asked if we provide services for the data that's held in the RML archives, which currently is on order of about uh, 3,800 layers or so. And the short answer is no, no, we don't. Um, we simply don't have the resources, the server resources to stand up and maintain 3,800 plus individual map services. It's worth noting though, that we can catalog services maintained by others and all the records in the open data collection fall into that category. I like to revisit this theme of customer service because it's a topic we feel is very important. And as I suggested earlier, something that often is overlooked in statewide geo portals. The success of Geodata at Wisconsin is not just dependent upon one person, it's a shared responsibility of the SCO and the RML. It's something we're working very closely on together. While we strive to make Geodata as comprehensive as possible, there's certainly times when somebody's looking for an item that we just don't have in the catalog. In those cases, we'll work with that person one-on-one, -on -one. we'll use our network of contacts to get, to get them to the right place and refer them to the appropriate organization. So these one-on-one -on -one consultations are, are really important. It's a big part of this customer service notion. This, this very often means talking people through the problems that they wanna solve. Um, for example, I recently took a call from somebody that said they were looking for a topographic map. And if they took it on face value and we're looking for topographic maps and geodata, well, they might be not getting what they're actually looking for. And in fact, in talking things through with this person, he clearly wasn't looking for a USGS topographic map. He was actually looking for elevation data. He just simply didn't have the knowledge to know what he should be asking for, what he should be searching for. And you know, in this particular case, you know, the conversation, conversation gets deeper. We talked about different types of elevation data, which <laughs> invariably results in the usual, oh, well, what kind of data do you want? Well, I want the best available. You know, it's, the conversations always get interesting from there. My point here is that simply being able to reach out and have a conversation with a real person is an important customer service aspect that's often overlooked when considering these statewide geospatial portals. We, we provide that extra level of service, which is a big, uh, big part of this. Another big part of customer service is ensuring that the tools we make available are reliable. So in our case, for example, something we do is we've got an automated set of procedures in place to check the 60,000 some odd links to various download sites, metadata, and so on to make sure that the tool is reliable. And because let's face it, nothing's more frustrating than a portal with a bunch of broken links. Along this line of customer service, we're always looking to simplify things and we wanna make sure that we're helping folks be as efficient as possible when they're searching for data. So to that end, we have the expected uh, written help page you'd find on most sites like this. And you know, let's be honest though, that most people aren't gonna read the instructions and that's okay, we get it. So in that regard, something we've done recently is we've released a series of eight training videos that talk about different specialized topics within Geodata Wisconsin. And these are typically two to two and a half minutes long, again, very focused to answer specific questions that people might have in a video format. So we hope that's useful for people, uh, again, when they're trying to use the site. So looking at this whole notion of customer service, you know, what I really want you to take away from this is that we're here, we're available to answer questions. We really wanna help people use the site. We don't just intend to you know, make a technical tool available and wish people well. We really wanna be engaged in helping those users be very efficient in what they're trying to find. So now that we've gone over some of the form and function of geodata at Wisconsin and what currently exists within the geoportal and repository environment, what we really want to focus on in this presentation is how you can participate. So how you can share content with us to make your data more broadly available through the geoportal. 
were of course very interested in working with data producer partners around Wisconsin so that we can not only enhance the collections over time, but keep the GeoPortal up to date and relevant. So we always wanna make sure that we're adding new and fresh content that users find relevant to the work that they're doing today. We can, as Jim talked about, um, automatically add content from existing open data sites in Wisconsin and that download content comes directly then obviously from those agencies. So that, that's an example of you know, a set of data that we're not actually archiving in the library, but we're offering broader exposure to that content through Geodata at Wisconsin. And of course, we're still interested in obtaining data the old fashioned way. So in the absence of an open data site um, or a website where you might be offering downloads to your data, we're still interested in having a conversation about the kinds of data you're creating in your agency or your organization and potentially adding that, that content to the archive in the library and then eventually to uh, the geo portal. One recent example that we had working directly with a partner was with Iron County. They had some 2020 pictometry imagery that they wanted to make more broadly available online for users. And so we were able to work with Wisconsin View, which is a repository on the UW campus for remotely sensed data, aerial imagery, LIDAR, things like that. So Wisconsin View was able to store the 2020 pictometry imagery of Iron County, and we were able to create a metadata record and an index within Geodata at Wisconsin. So users can find this imagery, click on an individual tile directly in the Geo portal, and then download that imagery directly from Wisconsin View. When we think about adding new layers or collections to Geodata at Wisconsin, Think about all of these examples that obviously exist outside of, for example, the WIP call for data that goes out to counties. So that is you know, a very specific list of foundational data layers that we're collecting and time stamping every year. But we know that there's a lot more out there than just those, those data layers. So um, in the absence of you know, your ability to publish an open data site or make data downloadable online, uh, we're really interested in collecting unique data that agencies and organizations are producing that are significant to their geographic region. So things that maybe no one else in the state is creating because it has such a, a unique local connection to a specific place. And from a research perspective, those unique layers are really the kinds of things we want to focus on adding to the geo portal for our, our academic users and uh, for anyone. So interested in having a conversation with you about the different kinds of data you might be producing, uh, and we can just talk about ways we can obtain the data, archive it in the library to ensure that it is permanently accessible through time uh, and made available through Geodata at Wisconsin for download. Another way that we are interested in working with partners is to um, collaborate on best practices for work involving metadata. And there's there are some really simple ways to approach this. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming um, process to think about tiny changes you can make to your process to help us make your data more discoverable. So we can work with you to um, talk about things like isotopic categories. Isotopic categories exist in different versions of metadata um, and we can use those to streamline where different data sets fall in the subject filter um, in Geodata at Wisconsin. And I'll talk a little bit more about what isotopic categories are, uh, but this is just to kind of give you a foundation of, of one example of something we might do working with an agency, a partner agency to help their metadata um, be a little bit more robust. Isotopic categories are part of the ISO 19115 metadata schema, which is the International Organization on Standardization Schema for Geospatial Data. There are 19 
categories, 19 terms, and they're helpful for allowing us to assign these different categories to individual data sets that are similar. So we can allow users to browse by subject or by category and see all of the data in the GeoPortal that exists within each category, all of those similar, similar data sets. And the reason that the isotopic categories are so useful in metadata is that it's a fixed list of terms. So in the library world, we call it a controlled vocabulary list, right? So it's a standardized list that is used universally across the board. So it's not a situation where you might have people assigning different unique terms that they're just coming up with to describe their data like we often see with keywords. Um, this provides us with a consistent set of 19 terms that we can use to populate the subject filter in GeoData at Wisconsin in a consistent way. You can add isotopic categories to metadata in a couple of different ways. This is one example showing the art catalog metadata editor. This is what we use in the library to author and edit all of our metadata. And the isotopic categories are part of the topics and keywords section. And it's very simple. It's just essentially a series of checkboxes with all 19 terms listed and you just check the box next to the one that is most relevant to whatever item you're describing. You can certainly check more than one uh, if that makes sense for, for your data as well. This is a required element, so we make sure in every metadata record that we do, um, we always assign at least one isotopic category to that data set. Adding isotopic categories in ArcGIS Online is admittedly a little bit more of a mystery for us. We think this is a process that's actually removed from the metadata creation or metadata editor form view and is actually more in line with adding tags to the item as it's being added to ArcGIS Online. So this is where you could add an isotopic category as a tag. We would be able to then scan those records into GeoData at Wisconsin and pull those isotopic categories out to populate the subject filter in the GeoPortal. And I, I'll admit this is relatively new work for us. We have just started working with a couple of state agencies on the best way to achieve this. So how the tags are entered and what structure and exactly where they're entered, um, that's something we're sort of working through, but it's just an example of how we hope to work more closely with data producers to make their metadata a little bit more usable within the filters like the subject filter in the GeoPortal. Okay, in summary, if you have data that you would like to share, that you'd like to make more widely available to a larger audience through GeoData at Wisconsin, we'd love to have a conversation with you about that and how uh, we can figure out creative ways to make that happen. And just some uh, closing best practice notes uh, when you're authoring metadata, always picking at least one isotopic category is going to be really helpful for our ability to integrate that into the subject filter um, to allow users to be able to browse and include those resources in their subject browse. And if you're using ArcGIS Online, same thing, adding an isotopic category to the keyword or tag section is again gonna help us uh, make that data represented in the subject filter um, so that the subject filter is more indicative of all of the resources that exist in the GeoPortal. So we spent quite a bit of time discussing work done to date. Now just a few words on some upcoming priorities. The annual WIP call for county data, which was recently released, certainly keeps us busy as does other periodic updates related to imagery like NAEP and WROC. 
Over the next year, we expect to put a lot of energy into streamlining the workflow with Wisconsin View. And Wisconsin View, if you're not familiar, it's the de facto raster data repository um, that's been in use in the state for many, many years now. Moving forward, we want to do a better job making sure Wisconsin View's holdings are accurately cataloged in GeoData and that we're part of the workflow as new data are added into Wisconsin View. And that hasn't always been the case. We're also working with Sam Batsley, the main uh, director of Wisconsin View, to work towards a future state where GeoData essentially takes over and serves as the front end interface to the Wisconsin View data holdings. That'll allow Sam to focus his energies on the raster archive itself, while we'll maintain the search mechanisms, which is something we're already doing and something we're, we're hopefully getting pretty good at. Okay, wrapping up, we hope our presentation has shed a little bit of light on what we've been up to in the recent past, and more importantly, how you can get involved. Thanks, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Hi, everyone. Thanks for Oops. joining and checking out our... Uh, you've heard that guy talk already. We don't need to, hear him, need to hear him again. All right, well, super awkward listening to yourself give a presentation for 25 minutes, but so be it. <laughs> so we've got a couple of minutes, I believe. If there's any questions that folks might want to throw out there, I don't think I saw any... Uh, questions come in. Actually, there's a couple here. Um, does Wisconsin's, I think it's saying, does GeoData Wisconsin have contacts with all Wisconsin tribes? That's from Maggie. I guess I'm not sure I understand the question. I don't know if you want to put any kind of clarification in there, Maggie. Oh, I see Jamie just typed. Not directly. This is something I'd like to pursue. Absolutely. Thanks, Jamie. Jim, can you hear me? Yes. This is uh, Joe Rosno from the Wisconsin DNR um, drinking and groundwater section. I was kind of curious if you guys could um, shed some light on, you know, interdepartmental, I, I would say, you know, departments sharing their geospatial data through, I think, geodata, I think, is something that we need to look at down the line in terms of getting collaboration between, you know, Wisconsin university entities, state entities, county entities, um, really organizing the data so we can view it in a more comprehensive format, as opposed to each, you know, the DNR has their own GIS data portal, you know, and I'm just wondering how you see that going forward in terms of improving that type of transparency of data throughout the state. Yeah, that's a big question. It's a good question. I'm not sure I can really do it justice in you know, 30 seconds or less here. Yeah. I guess I'll just say it this way, that we are, we are coordinating with the State Agency Geospatial Information Committee. And in fact, um, there's currently, I believe, five state agencies that contribute in an automated fashion data towards geodata. Um, that's an effort that the state agency, or SAGIC, it's called for short, is working on. Um, your question raises all sorts of related issues about how to support enterprise GIS and state agencies and everything else. So I, I'm afraid I can't even begin to do justice to your question. It's a good question, though, and it's just, you know, geodata, I think, is in municipalities as well, just one piece towards that. So I would definitely, in your case, have a chat with Larry Cutforth, who you may know, who is your agency GIS coordinator. And Larry can definitely you know, give you some pointers in that regard. So sorry, I can't really say more about that than- No, it's more of a uh, philosophical question than no. a, a direct answer. No, <laughs> semi-rhetorical, got it. All right, I think we're out of time. So we're just gonna leave it at that. And on behalf, behalf of Jamie and myself, thanks for your time.